Ahora escucharemos. Now we will have the Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Antonio Guterres. President Petro, thank you for hosting this very important meeting here in Cali. This is a microcosm of the biological wealth of our planet. Your Excellencies, dear friends, nature is life. And we are living, however, a war against it. This is a war in which there can be no winners. Each year, we see rising temperatures going higher and higher. Each day, we lose more species. Each minute, we are seeing plastic waste being thrust into our oceans, rivers, and lakes. You're not mistaken, that is what is an uh, existential crisis. No country, rich or poor, is immune to the devastation caused by climate change, the loss of biodiversity, the degradation of the land, and pollution. These environmental crises are, do not know any borders. The number of ecosystems and life systems uh, threatened, and this is a threat to human health and undermining sustainable development. The engines of this destruction are based in economic models that are obsolete, which fuel unsustainable models of production and consumption. And we are seeing them multiplied by the inequalities in terms of rich wealth and power. With every day that goes by, we are seeing more turning points that could fuel more hunger and m human uh, displacement and armed conflicts. We have 75% of the globe and 66% of the oceans have been affected by this. Dear friends, colleagues, biodiversity is humanity's ally. We should move from destroying it to preserving it. As was I've said on a number of occasions, we much make, must make peace with nature, and this is the defining task of the 21st century. And this is the spirit between behind today's uh, um, World Coalition for Peace with Nature, a call for life. We must combine our national and international forces towards a balanced and harmonious balance with nature, protecting nature and maintaining and restoring and sharing in a sustainable manner our biodiversity at the global level. We recognize the importance of the innovations and practices of the indigenous peoples and Afro-descendants, farmers in local communities, who are important for life. Last month, UN member states adopted the Pact for the Future. The Pact recognizes the need to accelerate efforts to restore, protect, conserve and sustainably use the environment. It emphasizes the importance of halting and reversing deforestation and forest degradation by 2030, and other terrestrial, terrestrial and marine ecosystems that act as sinks and reservoirs of greenhouse gases. This means conserving biodiversity while ensuring social and environmental safeguards in line with the Paris Climate Agreement and the Kunming Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework. When the framework was adopted two years ago in Montreal, the world made bold commitments to living in harmony with nature by mid-century. Its goals and targets require robust monitoring, reporting, and review arrangements to track progress, 
as well as a resource mobilization package to increase finance for biodiversity from all sources, mobilizing at least 200 billion US dollars per year by 2030. But we must now turn these promises into action in four vital ways. First, at national level, all countries must finally present clear, ambitious and detailed plans to align with the framework's targets. These national plans should be developed in coordination with national determined contributions and national adaptation plans with positive outcomes in the Sustainable Development Goals. We must shift to nature-positive business models and production, renewable energies and sustainable supply chains, zero-waste policies and circular economies, regenerative agriculture and sustainable farming practices. This must become the default for governments and businesses alike. Second, we must agree on a strength and monitoring and transparency framework. This is not only vital for accountability, but also about enabling course corrections and driving ambition. Third, finance promises must be kept and support to developing countries accelerated. We cannot afford to leave Cali without new pledges to adequately capitalize the Global Biodiversity Framework Fund and without commitments to mobilize other sources of public and private finance to deliver the framework in full. And we must bring the private sector on board. Those profiting from nature cannot treat it like a free, infinite resource. They must step up and contribute to its protection and restoration. By operationalizing the mechanism on the sharing of benefits from the use of digital sequence information on genetic resources, we will give them one clear avenue to do so, bringing more equity and inclusivity. And finally, in the spirit of this COP de la gente, we must engage all parts of society, in particular indigenous peoples, people of African descent and local communities. Too often they have been on the sidelines of global environmental policy. Too often environmental defenders have been threatened and killed. Indigenous peoples, people of African descent and local communities are guardians of our nature. Their traditional knowledge is a living library of biodiversity conservation. They must be protected. And they must be part of every biodiversity conversation. The establishment of a permanent subsidiary body within the Convention on Biological Diversity would mark a significant step forward, ensuring indigenous voices are heard at every stage of the process. Peace with nature means peace with those who protect it. And we must defend the people who defend nature. Excellencies, across all these areas, we know progress is possible. Many countries around the world are stepping up to lead the way. Brazil, Colombia, Indonesia, and Malaysia are leading by example by ramping up efforts to curb deforestation. The Congo Basin is intensifying efforts to increase protective area coverage. The European Union's nature restoration law is a step toward halting and reversing biodiversity loss. Mobilizing all countries, each with different levels of wealth and capacities, is challenging. But swift global cooperation can provide the defense we so desperately need against wildfires, floods, extreme weather, and pandemics. Last year's agreement on marine biodiversity of areas beyond national jurisdiction demonstrated our determination for every hectare of the planet. We need the same determination later in the year as countries come together to conclude negotiations on the landmark treaty to tackle plastic pollution that has been inspired and lifted by these examples. Excellence, chers amis. Excellencies, dear friends. 
The mission here in Cali is quite clear. We must speed up progress for biodiversity. We must mobilize the necessary resources and strengthen the role of um, indigenous people and those of African descent and local communities. We can and we must save the ecosystems, which are the source of our life, and maintain the uh, climate goals to make them achievable. No other path forward is possible. And the same go, it's, it's a, the question of the survival of planet and nature. We must choose in a wise way. We must choose life. Make peace with nature. Thank you. We would like to express our gratitude to the United Nations Secretary General for those words. COP16, peace with nature, is a way to improve our relations with nature and to undertake urgent steps which will lead to 